Buckle up, folks. I'm comparing the Mac Studio to the Mac Pro. Yeah, including all of the configurations. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that notification icon so you don't miss a single video. So Apple just released the Mac Studio. And in this video, I'm gonna be comparing both versions of the Mac Studio, the one configured with the M1 Max, as well as the one configured with the M1 Ultra to the Mac Pro. And I'm gonna compare it against the base model of the Mac Pro, as well as the high-end model. So we've got a Mac Studio starting off at $2,000, jumping to $4,000, to the Mac Pro starting off at $6,000, and spec'd out tips the scale at over $45,000. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun video. I'm gonna break this into sections that you can navigate using the chapter markers down below. You can go through ports and connectivity and specs, and then we're gonna jump into some performance compar comparisons, and then we'll give you a rough summary at the end. So I'm excited, let's go ahead, dive into this whole thing. Starting with the various configurations that you can choose for both the Mac Studio as well as the Mac Pro. The Mac Studio can be configured with one of two processors. You can choose the M1 Max processor, which is a 10 core CPU, or the M1 Ultra processor, which is effectively two M1 Max processors fused together, which gives you a 20 core CPU. The base model of the Mac Pro comes with an eight core 3.5 gigahertz Intel Xeon W, but the highest end model can come with a 28 core 2.5 gigahertz Intel Xeon W with turbo boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. Mac Studio can be configured with up to 128 gigs of memory, depending on which model you choose. The M1 Max version comes with 32 by default, but you can configure up to 64. The M1 Ultra version has double the bandwidth for memory, so it starts off at 64, but can be configured with up to 128. The Mac Pro, on the other hand, it starts off with a paltry 32 gigs, but it can be configured with up to one and a half terabytes of DDR4 EEC memory. And also, I want to note that with the Mac Pro, you have the option to skirt Apple's high upgrade pricing. You don't have to buy your memory from Apple. You can buy with a 32 gig configuration and upgrade it yourself afterwards, which has a lot more options. You can start off small and add as you go, or just get it cheaper than what Apple is offering. With the Mac Studio, that memory is not replaceable. What you buy with is what you got. The same goes for storage. The Mac Studio starts off with 512 gigs of storage, but it can go up to an eight terabyte SSD. The Mac Pro, on the other hand, it too comes with various storage options starting off at 512 going up to 8 terabytes but the Mac Pro has a ton of different options for upgrading that storage after the fact. There are multiple bays inside. There are full-on PCIe Gen 3 slots. There are other bays where you can attach hard drives into. So there's ways that you can attach hard drives and SSDs internally in the Mac Pro. The Mac Studio, you cannot upgrade the storage at any point in time. Contrary to what some other videos on YouTube said, you cannot upgrade the storage on the Mac Studio. For graphics, the Mac Studio starts off with an M1 Max processor, which has a 24 or 32 core GPU. The M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio comes with either a 48 or 64 core configuration. For the Mac Pro, there are a few different configurations, starting off with the AMD Radeon Pro W5500X, but all the way up to the AMD Radeon Pro W6900X. On the Mac Pro, you also have the option to add Apple's Afterburner card. Apple's $2,000 Afterburner card slots into the PCIe slots of the Mac Pro's case, and it helps with ProRes ProRes RAW video. So if you are a high-end video expert, this can definitely speed up those encode times if you're working in ProRes or ProRes RAW. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, has video encoders and decoders built into the M1 Max and M1 Ultra Silicon. So this has kind of their own version of the Afterburner card, but it'll also work with any other video that you're working on too, not just ProRes and ProRes RAW. 
So there are dedicated ProRes encoders and decoders, but they also work, there's standard video encoder and decoders as well. So you should see improved video performance across the board when you're editing on a Mac Studio. Additionally, the M1 Ultra version has double the encoders as the M1 Max version. How is this gonna play out in your actual video workflows? Man, there are too many variables to decide between the amount of memory you have, the graphics cards you have, the silicon encoder video cards you have, the afterburner card. There's a lot that comes into play. So just be careful of what you're working in and which one makes the most sense for you to try to get the best idea of which configuration will help your workflow specifically. Let's go ahead and talk about the ports on the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. On the back of the Mac Studio, there are four Thunderbolt 4 ports a 10 gigabit ethernet port, the Mickey Mouse power connector, two USB-A ports, and an HDMI port. Don't forget there's also a headphone jack there and the power button. On the front of the Mac Studio, you have two Type-C ports as well as a dedicated SD XC card reader. Now, depending on which silicon is on inside, we'll determine what these ports are. If you have the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio, those will be USB-C ports. However, the M1 Ultra, since it's effectively two M1 Max processors together, has additional bandwidth for more Thunderbolt. So these will be Thunderbolt 4 ports if you have the M1 Ultra. The M1 Ultra version has up to six Thunderbolt 4 ports on here, and the M1 Max is capped at four Thunderbolt 4 and two USB-C. The Mac Pro has two Thunderbolt 3 ports located on the top, and around back you have additional Thunderbolt 3 ports two USB-A 3 ports, and dual gigabit ethernet ports. There are also total eight PCIe Express card slots. There are also two HDMI ports on my Mac Pro base configuration, but you can upgrade that Mac Pro with additional PCIe cards up to 12 Thunderbolt ports. Mac Studio here is equipped with Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 6, whereas the Mac Pro still has Bluetooth 5, but only has Wi-Fi AC. When decked out, the Mac Pro can power up to 12 external displays, six 5K displays or six 6K displays, which includes the Pro Display XDR. The Mac Studio is slightly more limited. It can run four 6K displays, including the Pro Display XDR, with an additional fifth display running at 4K resolution over HDMI. Now let's go ahead and talk about the performance differences between a $2,000, a $4,000 Mac Studio, and a $6,000 and $45,000 Mac Pro. In the Geekbench 5 single core test, the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio scored a 1798, while the M1 Ultra version got a 1786, effectively the same within the margin of error. Then on the Mac Pro side, the base version with that eight core processor only got a 1015, while the top tier version got an 1152 on that single core test. In the multi-core testing, it's even more apparent of the differences. The M1 Max version of the Mac Studio scored a 12822, while the M1 Ultra version scored a 24210, which is pretty darn incredible. The Mac Pro, on the other hand, scored a 7993 on that base model, while the 28-core Mac Pro scored a 19,951. So yes, the spec'd out version of the Mac Studio has a much higher CPU performance on that multi-core and single core test than the $45,000 tricked out Mac Pro. In the Geekbench 5 graphics testing running under metal, the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio scored a 6629, while the M1 Ultra raised that graphic score with a 91938. Now, those both do beat the entry-level Mac Pro, which comes with that AMD Radeon Pro W5500X, which scored a 41,874. But if you configure the Mac Pro with a maxed out Radeon Pro W6900X, that'll get you all the way up to a 170,100, which is incredibly high. And you can even configure the Mac Pro with a pair of those Radeon Pro W6900X GPUs. So what does this all equate to, right? Should the owners of Mac Pros go and just trade those things in for a new Mac Studio? No, not necessarily. The Mac Pro still has a bunch of benefits to it, and there's about to be a new Mac Pro coming out that's going to blow the Mac Studio 
even away. So if anything, Mac Pro owners who like the Mac Pro should hold out for the next generation Mac Pro versus trading it in necessarily for the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio is great because it's so ultra compact as well as powerful. This thing takes up no space at all and is so much easier to carry around than a Mac Pro. So there are a lot of gigs where people are carrying around Mac Pros to video sets for production crews, for concerts, and they have to lug that thing around and it is heavy and there's wheels and it, it's a crazy machine. Whereas you can now do a lot of that with a Mac Studio. And in those cases, it does make sense. Plus, the Mac Pro can still be configured with better graphics, a bunch more memory, and much more internal storage. You can trick the Mac Pro out to exactly your specifications, whereas the Mac Studio comes as it is. So it's always gonna depend on your workflow, which one makes sense, but there is still a place for the existing Mac Pro, and we know there's a new one coming down the line that's going to be even more impressive. So what do you guys think? Are you impressed with the Mac Studio's performance? Are you still a fan of the Mac Pro? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you'd like to grab either of these machines, I've got deals listed in the description below. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way.